my name is Debbie Norton. Um, I've been sitting, we are sitting on our property here that uh, my great great grandfather came and settled in 1823. Uh, I'm the fifth generation of our family to live here, uh, and my grandchildren who live next door are the seventh generation. Um, grew up here. Spent a lot of time on the river with my dad, especially in my younger years. Um, probably up to about the age of 10 or 12, we spent a lot of time fishing. Uh, back in those days, uh, the men used to work in the woods, but they worked in the woods in the winter and uh, with the horses and so on. And so in the summertime, they would be home and my dad fished. Um, we, we fished right over there. Where I'm looking at the island now, there was a channel that ran up this side mm -hmm. of the island as well. Yeah, yeah. And when we fished there, that the, the fish were running between your legs, mm -hmm. and it was it was really cool. Uh, there used to be some uh, people other than my dad and I at the at the river, and of course, and uh, my dad would hook fish and give it to me, and I was probably seven or eight. And, and you know, I'd be playing the fish and reeling it in, and they say, she's gonna lose the fish, she's gonna lose the fish. And Dad said, okay, well, I'll catch another one. <laughs> so it, it was, and, and the fishing was so good that year. Um, my mom and dad's house is just behind us, back by the road here. And I can remember one day at lunchtime, we all, we were fishing for the morning, and, and then we went back and had lunch, and we left. And oh, what is it, 500 yards maybe? And my my brother Fred, he was fishing with us, and, and he ran, he ran to the river to start fishing before we all got there. And by the time we got that 500 yards in, just the time that he ran, he had caught a grill, landed a grill, and was coming ashore with a second grill. So it was good fishing in the 60s. Yeah. Uh, so we run year round. Because we, uh, of course, uh, with any business, um, we have diversified. And so we, everything in the outfitting business tends to run in, in seasons. So we spring fish from, uh, for Atlantic salmon from uh, about April 20th until May 5th to the 10th, depending on when the ice runs. We, um, now we bass fish. We uh, bass fish for uh, striped bass um, for about a month from May 10th to June 10th. Uh, we bear hunt from May 10th to the end of June. And uh, then we also do conferences. Uh, we've diversified into the conference business and we're the home of the Wallace McCain Institute. They come here and they have their um, entrepreneurial learning programs. And so they're in, um, at that point in time in two, they have a big graduation in June, and it's, it's really um, probably May and June, April, May and June is the craziest times of the year around here because we're spring fishing, we're bass fishing at the same time, we're bear hunting at the same time, and we're trying to do our conference business so in answer to your question, it would depend. I have approximately 10 employees that work for us pretty much full time. Um, and if we have an influx of guests that comes in that needs guiding and whatever, um, there's usually a few people in the community that <clears throat> will fill in. Gosh, I might even have to guide, dust off my guides badge myself and, and, and put a few hours in on the river. Although that doesn't happen very often anymore. I'm usually stuck on top of the hill. I can document people coming here since uh, 1914 to, to fish here on the shores with us. Um, I have a picture. My I know it's 1914 because my dad was born in 1912 and he, uh, he's being held by a, a lady who came here with her husband to go fishing. At that point in time, there were no camps here. There was nothing here. Uh, the people who came uh, were housed just back over our shoulder here on the hill at my grandfather's house. 
And so that's basically the beginning of people fishing here. Uh, prior to that, my, my mother's family was very involved with uh, the Holmes Lake. Um, my mom was a Holmes, although the lake is not named after her family. Uh, but uh, we, my relatives, my grandfather and, and my uncles and so on, and my grandfather Blackmore uh, all worked at Holmes's Lake when they started that operation up there in 1904. Uh, it's my understanding that the province of New Brunswick gave three land grants. Um, one was um, to uh, George Pratt from New York and one was to uh, a Robinson a chap who was a railway uh, person from uh, the province of Quebec and then I forget who the third plot was given to, but eventually uh, the Pratt family wound up with all three of them. And uh, at that point in time, in 1904, and I do have the old pictures here, uh, dating back to 1904. Wow. And uh, there was uh, 22 horses, uh, uh, not 22 horses, but 22 uh, wagons that were uh, pulled by horses and they took um, all of the supplies and things that they were building with up there. Uh, they trucked them in and out by horse, horse and wagon. Uh, my grandfather Blackmore used to uh, uh, take supplies into them. And so it's about a two day trip, uh, as you can imagine, uh, with a horse and a wagon. And uh, my, my uncle who was a caretaker for them for like 70 some years. He told me the story about one day, I, I said to him, I, and his name was Hubert Holmes, I said to him, you know, that must have been a great life, you know, you could, uh, you know, riding in and out on horseback and taking the people in. And he said, oh no, dear, he said, we walked. He said, if we were lucky on the way out, we, we might have, there might be a horse for us. So, to ride on, but we, we walked uh, off and up to our armpits and water crossing the river. And, but he told me the story about my grandfather Blackmore. Apparently they were coming out and, and he was, uh, he was uh, guiding them, a bunch of uh, ladies out and it's really amazing to us and you should see the picture. Uh, the, the women are all dressed in uh, dresses right down to their ankles and they of course were all riding side saddle. And, uh, Apparently it was pouring rain, it was pouring rain and my grandfather Blackmore was going in with the horse and wagon and, and uh, Mrs. Pratt looked down at him and she said, uh, good, good morning Isaac. And uh, it was pouring rain. She said, uh, the, uh, the weather's a little inclement today Isaac. She, my grandfather looked at her and he said, Yes, Mrs. Pratt, this sporting life's a rough one, but somebody has to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, actually right over uh, across the way there, Greg, where one of our lodges is sitting, is where uh, my dad built the first camp. Um, I do have a picture of it kicking around somewhere. There was no road out here, and I'm told that he actually carried the, uh, the lumber out on his back and built the, the cabin. Wow. Um, so that was the beginning, and uh, then it burned. Uh, he was uh, he cleaned the ashes out of the stove. Uh, I think it was a Saturday morning, and he put them down over the side hill. And he went to Red Bank to pick up the next bunch of guests, and when he came back, the camp was in flames. And, and and I guess everybody up and down the river came running with buckets and were trying to throw it out, put the blaze out with buckets of water, but it burned. And then he built another little old cabin, and he, he built, my mom had a little old cookhouse over there. So that'd be back in the 1930s, 40s? Um, yes. Yeah, early, early 40s, I believe, by that point in time. But uh, when he built the cookhouse, uh, again, he carried the lumber out from the road on his back. And when, uh, when Dale and I, bought the place and started to run it as a as a, a place for fishers and hunters to come. Uh, we, we had to tear down Plum's old hookhouse because it was rather on the dilapidated side by that point in time. And one of my brothers said to me, he said, did you get the board with dad's name on it? I said, what are you talking about? Said, the board, the board that was in the ceiling, it had our father's signature on it. 
he said that when you bought something back in those days, you signed your name on it, and that was that you know your promise that you were going to pay for that. So Dale went and rummaged through the boards that he had uh, torn apart, and, and sure enough, we do have the name, and it we, wow. it's it's over my door in the kitchen with his signature on it. So.